Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis reaching out in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Glory to God. I want to take uh, the next few minutes, glory to God, and I hope it. Uh, I don't uh, take that long, but I want to exalt you from a lesson that God has laid upon my heart for this Saturday afternoon. Glory to God. Amen. Usually on Thursday, I come on and do my broadcast, but this uh, past Thursday was the 4th of July, and so uh, I was uh, waiting for the instruction of the Holy Ghost and uh, feel led of the Spirit to come on at this time and uh, do this lesson leading up to the message that I'll be teaching Sunday morning in our church service. Glory to God. I want to teach a lesson from the subject, In Christ versus in Christ's hand. And a uh, long time ago, God taught me this, glory to God, and I had to learn this the hard way in my life, but I want to teach it, and hopefully it'll help somebody, glory to God, in the church, because a lot of times, those that are in Christ, amen, that are born again, don't really realize this, and I believe that it's necessary for us to realize uh, the difference between being in Christ and in Christ's hand. Glory to God. So I'm going to try to teach this lesson today. I hope you pray with me. Glory to God. And I appreciate all of you that are logging in. Amen. I'm doing this lesson. I'm going to leave it on Facebook. And it's for the people who want to go and listen to it. Glory to God. So the subject that I want to deal with today for the next uh, however long. Glory to God. I don't plan on being too long. Uh, the subject again is in Christ versus in Christ's hand. Amen. And a lot of people say use the term, I'm in God's hand, and that's good, but in uh, as we look at the scriptures, it's not so good. Amen. And I'm going to try to show you that in the scripture. Amen. I'd rather be in Christ opposed to in his hand. Now, thank God for his hand, and thank God that if he hold you in his hand, nobody can pluck you out. But I want to show you that you need to be in him not just in his hand. Glory to God. Now, my introduction, uh, according to the word of God, when anyone truly repent and call on the name of Jesus Christ to save them, God will send his Holy Spirit into that person's life. And when the Holy Spirit come in, he placed that person in the body of Christ. That's where you're placed in Christ. Hallelujah. Not in his hand. You're placed in him. Glory to God. I want to read a scripture to validate that. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. The Bible says, for by one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, are we all baptized into one body. He places you into that one body, that body of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay. So when a person truly repent, call on the name of Jesus, the spirit of God come and the spirit of God place you in Christ, in Christ's body, not in his hand. Okay, now we want to make sure we get that point clear. Now, St. John chapter 14, verse 23 says this. <clears throat> Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay, as you love God, as you walk in God, as you walk in the body of Christ and, and devour his word, God, amen, uh, ab abides with you. The Holy Spirit abides with you. Jesus Christ abides with you. Because the scripture clearly says in John 14, verse 23, I'm going to read it again. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Amen. He'll walk in the word of God. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now look at first John chapter one and verse five. And I want you to get this point as I make this point. Amen. Uh, as clear as I possibly can. 
First John chapter one, verse five. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, watch this, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There is no sin in God. There is no darkness in Christ. There's no darkness uh, in the body of Christ. Amen. You can't uh, break God's commandments in the body of Christ. You can't allow any darkness in your life. Glory to God. If you walk, if you stay in the body of Christ, if you stay in that place that God by his spirit place you in, you're walking in light, complete light, and you're growing in the things of God. And keep in mind in him is no darkness at all. I want to make that clear. Glory to God. There is no way possible Anyone can sin inside of the body of Christ. It's impossible. When you search the scriptures, amen, you will find that this is a true fact. It is impossible for sin to occur in that body. Praise God. But you've been placed in that body. Let's keep reading. Amen. And let me go to another point. So knowing this, what happens when a born again believer decide to walk in darkness? You know as well as I know that many of uh, the people of God who have been saved and placed in the body, there are times or there were times in their life when they walked outside of God. They walked outside of the word of God. Amen. There was times when many of them went back and did some of the things that they did, shouldn't be doing. Glory to God. I can even testify to it in my own life. Glory to God. I thank God today that I live a life without sin. Amen. I don't hold unforgiveness in my heart. I keep a pure heart. Why? Because I know that to remain in a pure place, I have to stay pure. But I had to learn that over the years. Glory to God. And I, God had to show me this. And God had to show me that you cannot sin in Christ. So if you want to remain in Christ and in that body, you got to walk inside of holiness. You got to walk inside of the word of God. You got to keep your heart pure if you want to stay in that place that the Holy Ghost put you in. Glory to God. Now, you say, well, when a uh, Christian begin to walk in darkness or get in sin or whatever you want to call it, where are they? Glory to God. That's what I'm going to try to prove to you. Amen. You either in Christ or you in either in Christ's hand. Glory to God. And I'm going to show you some churches in the scripture that wound up in his hand. Amen. And how did they get in his hand? Glory to God. And I thank God for his hand because if his hand is still up on your life, that simply mean God is still dealing with you. That simply mean God is still having mercy upon you. There was times in my life, glory to God, when I know that I was outside of Christ because of the life that I was living through my ignorance. Amen. But I later on learned that God's hand was still upon my life. He helped me in the palm of his hand and he kept dealing with me until he brought me back to repentance. Amen. And brought me back to that place. The Holy Ghost put me in and that's in Christ and in Christ. There's no darkness in Christ. There's no sin. Praise God. Let me look at Lamentation chapter 3, start at verse 19. It says, Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, <clears throat> my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Amen. I remember back in my life when God had to allow me to go through some things just to humble me, just to get me to have a broken and a contrite heart. But I was in his hands at that time. He was still dealing with me at that time. The Bible said that God's spirit would not always strive with us. I thank God that he was still striving with me. But where was I at that time? I was in his hands. Glory to God. So it says, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have our hope. It is of the Lord's mercies. Listen, saints, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I thank God during those times when I was uh, in, in, in darkness in my life that God had mercy on me. So I cherish where I am in God. Now I cherish living a clean life. I cherish living a life without sin now, because I know as I look back, I know where I come from. Glory to God. And I realize 
now that if I would have died in that situation, I would have died lost. But the Bible says that it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. It was God's mercy on my life back then. It was God's mercy that was keeping me, holding me in the palm of his hand, keeping his hand upon my life, causing me to be brought to brokenness, glory to God, so that I could come to a place of repentance and realize that being in his hand is not necessary, necessarily the best place to be, glory to God. Let's keep reading. I'm going to go to John chapter 10. It says, John chapter 10, verse 30, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. Amen. And I know them and they follow me. And I want you to keep that in mind because I'm getting ready to read some other scriptures. And if you lose sight on this, uh, on this particular scripture, verse 27, you're going to uh, uh, misinterpret the rest of these verse. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. It is important for you to hear the voice of God in the situation you're in, it is important for you to follow him. Because if you hear his voice and follow him, God can lead you back to that pasture. Glory to God. God can lead you back to that place that the Holy Ghost placed you in when you first got saved. But let's go on to verse 28. It says, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. They shall never perish is based upon hearing his voice and following him. Now, if you don't hear his voice and you don't follow him, don't expect eternal life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't expect to have, amen, God reward you at the end of your life. Romans chapter 2 tell you more about that, but I'm trying to get through this lesson. So it says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Watch this. Neither, here's something else he said, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Glory to God. When God holds you in his hand, can't nobody pluck you out. God is keeping you down. Why? Because he's dealing with you. His hand is up on your life. Amen. You may not be what you should be, but God's still holding you in his hand. He's still striving with you. But keep in mind, that's not the best place in the world to be. Amen. Now it's better than being in Satan's hand. It's better than being in darkness without God. But but let's let's get the whole message that what God trying to deliver to us. If you in his hand, that means you are not in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. So let's keep reading. It says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. No one can pluck you out of God's hand when he's holding you in his hand. But let's look a little further at his hand. I want to show you some things. Amen. About his hand. Now, if you go to Revelation chapter uh, one, verse 20, and here is what it says. It says the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Amen. That was those leaders in those churches. Let me read that again. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. <laughs> now, as you read the book of Revelation, God took seven churches to send a message to all the churches. Glory to God. He picked these seven churches for purpose. Now the Bible says the mystery of the seven churches, the mystery of it is how did they get out of Christ and now they're in his hand? Because the Bible clearly tells us, I read it in the beginning in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, when a person truly repent and come to God, Amen. The Bible said the Holy Ghost takes and place that person in Christ, not in the Christ's hand. He placed them in Christ. It says again, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Glory to God. That is the body of Christ, Christ's own body. It says whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be born or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So we all been placed in one body. And we all are made to drink of one spirit. Now, all of a sudden, in Revelation, you got seven churches God has selected to send a message to the church, the churches. Glory to God. And it says again in Revelation 1 verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars, 
which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now watch this. Let's go to Revelation 3 verse 22. It says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, God is saying, let everyone that, that's got an ear to hear, let him hear what he's saying to the churches. Now, what is he saying to the churches, those seven churches? Every one of those churches, all seven of them, some people say one or two churches, he was just encouraging them, but I want to show you that he had something to say to each one of these churches. That's why he selected them. Each one of these churches, he said, I know your works. Every one of them, all seven of them, he said, I know your works. He was talking about the good works as well as the bad works that they was doing. Glory to God. So it was a mystery. Now, what is the mystery? How did they get out of him? The, the spirit placed us in Christ. Amen. Not in Christ's hand. How did you get out of him and now you're in his hand? Glory to God. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. It says, and many, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Now, he's talking to all seven churches. He said, let him that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. Now, what is the Spirit saying to the churches? Here is what he's saying to all seven of them. It says, and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He was trying to get them to repent. He was rebuking them. Glory to God. They was in his hand, but he was rebuking them. He was correcting them. He was loving them. He was showing mercy to them. Because the uh, in Lamentation it says, uh, it's of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed. When I look back over my past life, glory to God, it was God's mercy that kept me alive. It was God showing me that I got you in my hand, but you need to be in me, glory to God, where you cease from your own labor, where you cease from the things and the darkness that you was walking in, glory to God. And this is why I cherish holiness today. This is why I cherish living a sin-free life today, because of where God has brought me from and all the things that he taught me. So these churches right here, God is trying to send the churches of our day a message that these churches are in his hand. And in his hand, watch it, what it says again, and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous and therefore and repent. He was trying to get every one of them to repent. Notice what verse 20 said. This is in Revelation and talking in reference to the seven churches. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, wait a minute. The Bible said one spirit placed us all in Christ. The Bible said God is fellowshipping with us. Jesus is fellowshipping with us. And we all are, are, are in. Uh, I'm in God. God's in me. I'm in his body. There's no darkness, no sin at all. How in the world now that Jesus is on the outside knocking, trying to get in? That's what happened to these seven churches. They done came out of him, and it's God's mercies that caused them not to end up in hell. God having mercy upon them, God's got them in his hand, but he's dealing with them about their wrongdoing and about their ways, and many people don't know that God is dealing with them and giving them the last warning, glory to God. But you got to understand the difference between being in him and in his hand, glory to God. So, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus don't supposed to be at the door knocking, trying to get in. He's supposed to already be in. Glory to God. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Let him that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What is the Spirit saying to the churches? I'm at the door knocking. How did I get out there? You in my hand now. Glory to God. You in my hand and I'm dealing with the churches and I'm dealing with them about their ways. I'm dealing with them about their actions. But many times the church 
think just because they can still sense God's spirit, they can still sense the anointing, they can still uh, 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 win souls to God, they can still, they, the gift is still working, they think God is approving of them. No, God's not approving of you. God is rebuking, God is chastening, God is giving you mercy. It's of God's mercies that you're not consumed. If you die in his hand, you could end up dying lost. Let me go to some other scriptures about in his hand. I want to show you what the Bible has to say about in his hands. Hallelujah. And many times I used to think in his hand, well, glory to God, I'm glad I'm in his hand. No, I want to be in him. Glory to God. And the Bible said in him is no darkness at all. In him, there is no division. In him, nobody trying to unify. Everybody is one in the body of Christ. Amen. There's no backbiting in the body of Christ. There's no division in the body of Christ. Amen. There is no, there is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. In Christ. Amen. That stuff exists outside of Christ. Amen. You may be in his hand. Amen. There's no one preacher doing another preacher wrong in Christ. It's just not there. Hallelujah. You can't do that and God overlook it. Hallelujah. In Christ. Hallelujah. Let's read some other scriptures. I'm trying to hurry up. Uh, Mark chapter 5 verse 30. Watch this. This is something Jesus was sharing and teaching the apostles. But keep in mind, Jesus had something even deeper that he had in his heart and in his mind when he was teaching them. Matthew chapter 5 verse 30. It says, and if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Let me share something with you, body of Christ. If you're in his hand, you're in his hand for a purpose because God is still dealing with you. God is still striving with you. That don't mean he approves of you. That don't mean that you're going to make it in in his hand. You're going to make it in in Christ. You're going to make it in in that body. Glory to God, where there is no darkness. The Bible said in him there is no darkness at all. But when you're in his hand, you can still experience some things, but you'll experience his, his hand still working with you. But don't let that deceive you, because if you offend the Lord, and amen, and if God get tired of striving with you, he can cut you off while you're in his hand. Glory to God. Let's look at John. I'm sorry, let's go to Psalms 21, verse 8. It says, thine hand shall find out all my enemies. In the hand of God, God's going to find out whether you love him or hate him. Glory to God. Because some people, they think they're getting away with things. Amen. And they still, like I said a while ago, they can still sense the anointing. They can still sense God's love. They can still sense God's spirit moving upon them from time to time. And that tend to deceive people to think that God's approving of them. But no, God's not the approving of you. God just still dealing with you. He got you in his hand. Satan can't pluck you out. Man can't pluck you out, but God sure can cut you off. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in Psalm 21 verse 8, thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Amen. So the reason God holds us in his right hand at times in our life when we go ignorant ways and when we walk inside of darkness is he want to find out do you really love him. When his voice speak to you about your ways, when his voice speak to you about the error of your ways, will you truly repent? Glory to God. And will you truly change your ways? If you don't, God's going to find out who his enemies are. Amen. And the Bible said God will send judgment to his people. Go read he Hebrews chapter 10. Glory to God. But let me finish this scripture. Thine hand shall find out all my enemies. Thy right hand uh, shall find out those that hate me. God's going to find out whether you really love him or hate him in his right hand. Glory to God. Whether you're going to repent. The scripture said whom he loved, he reproved him, he rebuked. But if they don't, if they don't repent, glory to God, they don't really love him. Let me go to some other scriptures. I know I'm going fast, but let me get through this. Psalm 74 verse 11. Why withdraweth thy, uh, thou thy hand? God will withdraw his hand. Amen. A lot of people don't understand being in his right hand. Amen. And, and like I said, I used to think that was a glorious thing. That is really not as glorious as being in Christ. The Holy Ghost, when he came in, placed us in Christ. And in him is no darkness. In him is no confusion. But when you're in his hand, Glory to God. You can experience those things, but God's still trying to work with you. Glory to God. But this scripture said, why withdraweth thou thy hand? 
even thy right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom. Glory to God. Amen. You know, you was in his bosom at one time. Now you plucked out and you in his right hand. Glory to God. Now God can withdraw that hand from you. Amen. If you don't repent like he was trying to get those seven churches to repent in the book of Revelation. And that's why he chose those seven, seven churches. And the mystery of it all was how did they, amen, They when they got saved, they was in Christ. Now the, how is it that they in his hand and he on the outside knocking trying to get in because of their ways, because they won't hear his voice. They won't take his chastening. Let's look at some other scriptures. Psalm 77 started verse 9. It says, Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Glory to God. Verse 10. And I said, this is my infirmity. See, people need to realize why they in his hand. You need to realize why you going through what you're going through. Don't lay blame on nobody else. Look at your own heart. Amen. Come to a place of repentance. It says, and I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of thy right hand of the Most High. See, God would do some things in, 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 in while you're in his right hand to cause you to remember his mercy, to cause you to remember his goodness. He'll cause you to remember there's a real hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Glory to God. But if you don't pay attention to it and you don't realize where you are, you can be deceived because God's hand's still on your life. You still feel a little joy every now and then. You still feel him dealing with you, but you're in his hand. Glory to God. Keep in mind, he can withdraw his hand. He can stop striving with you. You're supposed to be in Christ. That's where the Holy Ghost placed us all. It says, I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doing. Thy way, watch this, thy way, God's ways, thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Jesus is that sanctuary. It's in him. The Bible said that spirit placed us in Christ. In Christ, there's no division, no darkness, no sin. You can't sin inside of Christ. Hallelujah. God allows certain things when you're in his hand, but being in his hand has deceived multiple millions of people. You need to be in him. In the true sanctuary. It says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as God, as our God? Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalms 95, verse 7 and, eight, uh, uh, 7 and verse 8, and I'm just about finished. Hallelujah. For he is our God, and we are his people, and the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to God. Now, wait a minute. Now, that sounds pretty. But now I want to be the sheep in him. Glory to God. I don't want to be the sheep of his hand. God's trying to communicate something to us. And don't get in his hand mixed up with on his right hand. That's a totally different teaching now. Glory to God. Because Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. And those that are on his right hand are in good standing. But those that are in his right hand, that's a chastening. For those that are rebellious, those that have gotten out of the way, those that are outside of Christ. Hallelujah. So it says, he is our God. We, we are the people of his pastor and the sheep of his hand. You still his sheep, you still in his hand, but that hand is to bring you to a place of repentance so that you'll be back in Christ. Hallelujah. That's the true church. Hallelujah. Today, if you will hear his voice. Now, notice this scripture saying the day if you will hear his voice. In Christ, everybody hearing the voice of God. In Christ, everybody following the Holy Ghost. But in his hand, you got to hear his voice. You got to make a choice to hear him and obey him and adhere to him. So that's why the scripture said today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your heart. You can harden your heart in his hand. You can't harden your heart in Christ. There is no hard hearts in Christ. Let's get this record straight. It says, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. See, if you look in the Old Testament, the Old Testament saints was in God's hand. They was not in Christ. They hadn't even received the spirit yet. They wasn't born again. They was in his hand. But God delivered them out of Egypt, then turned around and destroyed every one of them that didn't believe. Glory to God. Let me see. Can I uh, read that for you in uh, Corinthians? Glory to God. I'm just about done. Amen. I don't want to rush, but I 
don't want to be long uh, also. Glory to God. But I want to read that to you in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 1. Watch this. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would that you should not be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and they all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Christ was in that Old Testament. Glory to God. It says in verse five, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Now those people was in his hand. God had his hands on them. God had his hand on them when they crossed through the Red Sea. God had his hand on them when they protected, when he protected them from Pharaoh. But then the Bible said, but many of them, God was not well pleased for they was overthrown in the wilderness in his hand. They was in his hand. And I'm trying to tell you that many people in our day and time are in his hand. They don't come out of Christ because of the things they do. The things they won't repent of, the, 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 the different sins that are in their life that they don't want to acknowledge and they think they're getting away, but nobody gets away with God. So it says, but with many of them, uh, God was not well pleased for they was overthrown in the wilderness. Now watch, watch this verse right here and watch it closely. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things. As they lusted also, or as they also lusted, look at verse 7, neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And many people are doing that in today's church, whether you know it or not. And they think just because they're in his hand that they're going to make it in. These Old Testament people was in his hand and many of them didn't make it in the promised land. Because God was not well pleased with them, but he had his hand on them. They was holding them in his hand. He was protecting them. They were still his people. They was a sheep of his pastor, just like the church of our day. Glory to God. It says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. Um, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Some of those same people that God held in his hand was destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and was destroyed of the destroyer. Now, now watch this. He's going to repeat himself in verse 11. Now, all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition, which is a warning upon whom the ends of the world have come. Glory to God. That's this end time church. God want us to know that yes, a lot of his people are in his hand. But keep in mind, you're supposed to be in him. And in him is no darkness at all. In him, the church is not trying to come together and unify. They're already unified. When Jesus prayed in John 17, Father, I pray that you make them one he made us one in Christ. Amen. But we got to love each other and treat each other right. And we got to call sin, sin when we see it. Glory to God. Because sin always take you out of Christ and you're in his hand. Now, we're going to one day do a study on all seven churches. And I want to go show you. I'm going to close with saying this. Glory to God. The church, number the first church at Ephesus, according to Revelation 2, verse 2 through 7, they left their first love. They left their first works. The uh, church at Smyrna, according to Revelation 2, verse 9 through 11, the Bible talks about they had the synagogue of Satan. And they was walking in fear. Glory to God. The church at Pergamos, according to Revelation 2, verse 13 through 16, they was holding bad doctrines in the church. And God addressed the Satan seat that was in the church. Glory to God. The church at Thyatira, according to Revelation chapter 2, verse 19, and verse through verse 23, Jezebel was allowed to teach and seduce the servants of God. And God addressed them about the depths of Satan in that church. Uh, Sardis. 
Amen. He addressed Saul of the church at Saldus. According to Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, they was dead while they were saying they was alive. They was talking about how alive they was, but God said you're dead. Hallelujah. They had unperfect works, and many of them had defiled themselves. The church at Philadelphia, according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 8 through 12, they had little strength. Now, why would you have little strength when the Bible said, I can do all things through Christ? It was something draining their strength, but they had little strength. And he also addressed the synagogue of Satan when he was talking to the church at Philadelphia. And I know a lot of people have overlooked that, but it was there. And keep in mind, the Bible says he addressed all seven churches and he told all seven churches, I know your works. And at the end of the chapter, in chapter 3, when he finished talking to them and, and, and about them, he said, let everyone that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Not to the five churches, not to the six churches, all seven of them. Glory to God. So the church at Philadelphia, according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 8 through 12, had little strength. He had to address uh, the synagogue of Satan. And he said, no more will you go out. No more. So they, apparently they was going out. They was going out. How did you go? How do you go out of Christ? By the things you do, by the things you allow in your life. Hallelujah. Now, the last one is Laodicea. According to Revelation 3, verse 15 through 20, they was lukewarm. They was full of pride and they was blind. All seven churches had some issues. And the mystery of those seven churches is how did they get out of Christ? By the things they was allowing in their lives. And the last word again, glory to God, at the Revelation chapter 3, start at verse 20 down to verse 22. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcome it, all seven churches had something to overcome. And he's talking to the churches of our day. Glory to God. If we are divided. If we are mistreating each other, if we're walking in sin, amen, God is addressing us and he's using these seven churches. And he said, let him that have ears to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. There's so many people who think they can still lie, cheat, steal, commit adultery and live wrong. And they think a fake grace going to cover them and let them in. Not so. Glory to God. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcome and is set down at my father, uh, with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches, all seven of them. If you're in his hand, you need to repent and get back in him. And in Christ, there's no darkness at all. God bless you. This is Apostle Lewis. I hope you've been blessed by this uh, word of encouragement. Glory to God. It could be a word of rebuke to some people, but it is a word of encouragement. Come back to God. Be in him and walk in him. And the Bible said, Galatians 5 verse 16, This I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God bless you. See you on the next Facebook Live.